Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Southeast Media Sunrise, dedicated to giving a voice to authors of all genres. I'm your host, Jody Hawkinson. Joining us remotely by phone today is Tony Klinger, author of Under God's Table. Tony Klinger is a writer and filmmaker. In June, he received Romford's Lifetime Achievement Award, which joins his many other awards. He writes novels, film scripts, and plays. His novel, Under God's Table, and his book about making his film, The Kids Are All Right, The Who and I, are now on sale. The second edition of another of his novels, The Butterfly Boy, will be published before Christmas. Tony's latest film production, a feature documentary titled The Man Who Got Carter, premiered in 2018. In a career that spans being an academic, business leader, filmmaker, and writer, Klinger simply calls himself a storyteller. Welcome, Tony, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. So tell us a little about your book, Under God's Table. Well, it's the book about, um, you know, everybody talks about the Iraq war and they talk about it in terms of it being, you know, that that there weren't weapons of mass destruction. And this story is based on the idea, what if there were? What if there were and they were hidden someplace? And the whole structure of it is built around the idea of the conflict that goes on in the Middle East and has gone on for seemingly forever uh, between the two incompatible sides, the Jews and the Arabs. And people don't remember that the Jews, Abraham, came out of Iraq. That's where he that's where he originated, didn't originate in Israel, originated in Iraq. And so my story starts with two boys brought up by two families, one Jewish, one Arab, who are best friends. And the first time we see them is when awe and destruction hit uh, Iraq from the British and American forces. And it's then the story of how these two boys who start as the best of friends, like brothers, become the worst of enemies. Uh, kind of like the, the story of the history of uh, Jacob and Esau and uh, all, all of the historical figures that are in the Bible. But this is not a biblical story. This is a straightforward thriller, but in that background. And it covers the world. It goes from Iraq to America to Britain. Uh, and, and the battle that is, it culminates in terrible tragedy. And then hopefully there's some hope at the end of it. That is fascinating. I did a lot of research. It took a lot of uh, investigation to find out some of the background of some of the stuff that happened in 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 that war uh, to discover how it was really going on. Um, and so I had friends, uh, particularly in the American military, who gave me some great background information. And from that, we managed to piece together this story uh, based on partly fact and partly fiction. You know, like all good stories, you know, <laughs> the fact is usually more extraordinary than the fiction. So what made you write this book? What made me write it? Uh, you know, when you look at the world, you can look at it from uh, a recipient's point of view that, you know, you hear stories and, and you don't know what's really going on. Or you can go and find out. And I wanted to find out what really motivated people to do what they did. Uh, I don't think anybody really knows. And I think it was worth telling the story because I think it makes people think. Um, in one of the advertisements for the book, it said, you know, if we want revenge, first dig two graves. Um, it, it, it's very easy to think, you know, those things are simple. They're simple answers. There aren't simple answers to complicated questions. And, and that's part of the reason why I wrote the book. But in the first analysis, the first, you know, the first premise must always be to entertain and to make people interested. And I think we did that with this book. So tell me what your favorite part is. My favorite part of the book. I, I well, boys' toys. I, I, I kind of, <laughs> I kind, I kind of liked you know finding out about what these jets and these missiles and these rockets and things could do. But I also wanted you know in the it, when you look at what people do, you also want to understand the motivation. And so, the idea that in amongst all this tremendous action. It's a, there's a love story, a love story between a man and a woman. There's a love story actually between two guys. That, that I don't mean in a homosexual way. I'm talking about in terms of they truly love and hate each other. And I think that's true of, of, of many places, many, many t- different circumstances. 
Uh, and what I wanted to do was be able to tell that story in a in a very human way. Uh, you know, if I said to you, um, in the Battle of the Somme in the First World War, uh, thirty thousand people got killed in the first two hours. It doesn't really mean anything. But if I say to you, you know, your Uncle Harry, you know, the reason why he's only got one leg is because on the first day and, then, and I tell you that story, then you begin to un understand what it means for the big. The, the big numbers don't mean anything. What what gets to people is when. And stories of just a few people. What kind of reactions have you had to this book so far? They've been actually pretty sensational. Um, we had, uh, strangely enough, on our Facebook page, uh, we got this tremendous reaction and likes from people all over the Middle East. And it's strangely, when we started to look at them and analyze them, there were just as many Arabs as there were Israelis and just as many Americans as there were Brits. It just seemed to hit a, a point of, of, of um, sympathy, empathy, uh, all across the all across borders. I think, you know, when you get down to it, whatever people dress this up as, people are people. They're the same most places. Uh, the, the leaders may be different. The needs may be different. But people are always just human beings. And empathy and understanding is something we seem to need a lot of nowadays. Yeah. Well, it's really easy to get polarized and to to label people, you know, you know, like, you know, they're this, so therefore they're bad. You know, that's how that's how Nazism started um, when they, you know, they labeled particular groups as subhuman, untermenschen, um, you know, and it's obvious nonsense. It's 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 crazy. Um, you know, people aren't better or worse because they're tall or short. They're not better or worse if they're white or black. They're just people. And, you know, inside we're all the same. But that gets lost you know, when you start labeling people. So I was trying to make that point in this book, but without, you know, you don't want to cratch it, do it with a sledgehammer. You want to be subtle. <laughs> that is you know, so true. And I, I, yeah, and you, don't, and you don't want to make it a, a lecture or something. You, it's got to entertain. And then through that, you can tell a story. You know, I think the master of that in film is probably Steven Spielberg or in the past David Lean, who could humanize terrible situations or glorious situations through the story of interesting individuals, you know, Lawrence of Arabia for David Lean, Schindler's List for Stephen Spielberg. Hopefully in a little tiny way, we could do that with this book, with Under God's Table. So you mentioned a Facebook page. Would you like to share that uh, Facebook page with us? Uh, I re really, <laughs> I got so many pages of different, in different things. <laughs> the best thing for me to do is, is just to when you give out the web, web address uh, and that covers them all. It has it all in there. And that's TonyDClinger.com, right? That's what it is, Tony D. Klinger with a K. Um, and, uh, yeah, because that's got everything we're doing and what we've done and what we're going to do. And, and, and we're very happy to engage with people and answer any of their questions there. Fantastic. So can you give us, uh, without spoiling any of the story, can you give us uh, a little glimpse of something that happens in the book that you would like everyone to know about? Okay. Uh, well, I'll give you a bit of the start. Is the it, the two families uh, I described a little bit earlier are uh, having their Friday night dinner together uh, because that's what they do. The two families are just the mothers and their sons because the men are somewhere else. We don't know where that is till later. And they're having their dinner, and it's they're very humble, but it's you know that's the thing they do every every day on the weekend. And as they're sitting down to dinner, uh, there's this huge airstrike that happens, and it just by by accident hits where they're sitting, and everything's wiped out except these two boys who are hidden under the table, have been playing under the table, the two young kids. Under that table, they see there's a mark, and that's why it's called Under God's Table, because this table, the legend goes was made from the wood from Noah's Ark because everybody presumes that Noah's Ark, if it ever did happen, happened in Iraq. And so this is the ancient wood that was made that table. And they see some scratches on it. And one of them recognizes that those scratches are numbers. 
And what we later discover is that attitude where the weapons of mass destruction have been hidden in the desert. And that's our starting point. That's where the story unfolds, because now it becomes a mad search for that, because that would prove we were right to go to war or we were wrong. Fantastic. So can you give us a little glimpse? I know this is a second edition, but the Butterfly Boy that's going to be uh, released before Christmas. And I understand that's about the artist who lost the use of his hands when he was younger and Hitler found him as a favorite anyway. Yeah, this is a story based on uh, partially the truth. There was a, an artist uh, who you just described who lost the use of his arms when he was a little boy from polio, he caught polio, which was endemic in, in, in many countries in that time. And he taught himself and with the help of his parents uh, to paint using his mouth. And he was the man who later formed the mouth of the Foot and Mouth Painters Association. You might have seen, my character's not this exact same person, but you might have seen Christmas cards that come in a package for charity painted by people that are disabled. That's the artist who started that. It was a German artist. And the, the real main man's name is uh, Stegman. Mm -hmm. uh, and what then became suspect as his life went on, and he became this he a very Hemingway, Steinbeck kind of figure. He was a big, handsome man and an incredible womanizer, despite his handicap. But he also uh, was uh, in my book part of the Christian underground. So he was a complete ac anachronism. He was both should have been, you know, and under the way that the Nazis operated, uh, wiped out because they didn't allow people like that to live. Uh, they they used euthanasia. Uh, but Hitler liked his art, and so he was half Jewish. His mother was Jewish, and so he had two strikes against him, but he still survived. And was in the underground, so that was three strikes. But he he managed to get through this and built this huge business empire after the war, which some people called a charity and other people were less kind and called a business. So in the book we have, uh, which was a fiction, a congressional committee inquiry, which is a natural uh, cockpit like a theatre, uh, where he's being accused of abusing his privilege in America. Uh, but he carried on. And so this is a story from him when he's a small boy in 1908, 1908 I think 1909, in Germany to his, his demise in 1985. And it covers the world. It goes from his father in the First World War. His father fought for the Germans. And his story about being in the resistance against the Nazis in the Second World War with Hitler and all of those terrible things right through to he becoming this uh, huge uh, conglomerate uh, before his death. But in, in the story, we find out his love life, what happens to him, what happens to the people he loves, and this burning natural talent that he had. He had incredible talent. The real guy had incredible talent. I, you know, I have his art here in my house. Um, and an astonishing man. Uh, there are people sometimes that come through life that you go, how did that guy do that? How, how is that possible? It doesn't, doesn't make sense. Uh, and he was a rough diamond. I, you know, not pretending that my character is like a perfect you know, guy. He did some bad things, but maybe he did some bad things for some good reasons. I, I, and I like to explore that. It's the same in, in Under God's Table. It, the exploration of why... It's okay sometimes to do a bad thing for a good reason. You know, I'll put it like this. Would it have been a good idea to commit murder? No. Would it have been a good idea to commit murder to Adolf Hitler in 1932? Would have been a great idea. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. And it's that uh, question, that, mora that question of morality that I like to explore, those fine lines. Uh, it looks like we're out of time, uh, but anyone interested in purchasing any of these books can uh, log on to Amazon. You can also log on to our website at semediapro.com. Under God's Table is available now in paperback, and the second edition of The Butterfly Boy will be available before Christmas. That was Tony Klinger, writer and filmmaker, author of Under God's Table. Thanks again for joining us today, Tony. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. 
same here. And listeners, if you're interested in getting your book published, please visit us at semediapro.com and click on the book publishing link. This is Jody Hawkinson, host of Southeast Media Sunrise, Southeast Media Productions. Like us on Facebook at Southeast Media Productions or visit our website at semediapro.com.